And we are live. Good evening, everyone. We have some exciting news tonight. PayPal just announced that they will be accepting cryptocurrency. They will accept cryptocurrency. Now, understand, not your keys, not your crypto. So you're not going to have control over the actual private keys. So you don't really have actual true ownership of crypto. But for the longest, you've constantly, consistently heard people say, well, what can you use your crypto? What can you use it for? What can you buy with your crypto? Where can you use it at? Well, you can't say that anymore. PayPal, I believe they have about 26 million different merchants. So, so many different places you're going to be able to use your crypto currencies. I sit back sometimes and I just, I'm bewildered at how people can still consider this a scam, a Ponzi scheme. We are going on 11 years now. If a person consistently is sitting here and for 11 years they've been wrong, would you keep giving them money to invest for you? No, you wouldn't. So when I hear people make those ignorant comments and statements, I know they're coming from a place of lack of knowledge, lack of understanding that we are going through the fourth industrial revolution. Digital payments will be a part of that revolution. We are almost everything is going to be digitized. I talk to you about this in almost every video from the standpoint of investing, from the standpoint of employment, from the standpoint of being an entrepreneur. You cannot deny this anymore. My track record should speak for itself. If you've been paying attention to the information that I've been presenting you with, and if you've been actually going back and doing your due diligence on the things that I've been talking about, you would see that I've pretty much been on point. Whether it's gold and silver, whether it's the devaluation of the dollar, whether it's various different cryptocurrency projects. I remember back when the pandemic first started and gold sold off and silver sold off and crypto sold off. And everyone was saying, oh man, you know, see, look, watch out for that. And I told you what was going to happen play by play. The only way out of this is inflation. The only way out of this is to print more money. That's it. There is no other way out of this. And now we just broke 13 K we're pulling back a little bit now. And again, I expect more volatility. You're dealing with an asset class that's less, that's worth less than $400 billion. Of course you should expect volatility. You should expect 20 and 30% drops, just like you should expect 100 or 200% pumps, right? The risk, if you adjust it for the reward, it makes sense. Right. I'm willing to risk a 30, 40, 50 percent drawdown to make 15 times on my money. I keep telling you guys about Chainlink. If Ethereum is going to have any type of success, if smart contracts are going to be the future, you need decentralized oracles. So, so many of the things that I've been speaking about, and if you're in the academy, you should be making money. Whether it's through the airdrop that you received from um, Uniswap, whether it's you buying Ethereum when it crashed down to, I believe, like 120 or 160 bucks. If you've been following this channel and I've been talking to you about gold and silver for almost two years now, I've been calling these things accurately because I can just I can see where this is going. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. You should never blindly follow someone. You should take the information that's being presented to you and follow it. But think about it. The former PayPal CEO, we're going to play the video in a second. He stated that Bitcoin was a scam and it was a scheme and that it was going to go close to zero. Warren Buffett referred to it. I, I believe Charlie Munger referred to it as investing in baby brains and rat poison. Then we find out now JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, 
they're all getting involved in crypto. The former PayPal CEO says don't buy it, it's going close to zero. Now we find out PayPal's getting involved. It's known as a bait and switch. Same thing with gold. Warren Buffett tells you, oh, don't buy gold, it's just a stupid rock. But then you come to find out he's investing in gold and silver mining companies. At a certain point, you have, you have to start to see things for what it is, and you have to be able to read the tea leaves and start saying to yourself, okay, there's something here. Now, I'm not here to debate about whether or not the Rothschilds, the Bilderbergs, or, you know, the powers that be control this. You know, at the end of the day, do you want to make gains? Do you want to build some wealth? Do you want to make some money? Or do you want to sit around all day long on YouTube talking about conspiracy theories that may or may not be true? I love a good conspiracy theory, but I need money to survive and I need to build wealth. And we're witnessing a wealth transfer happen right in front of our very eyes. This is our dot-com bubble. Many of us are going to get filthy rich, filthy rich, who have been investing in these protocols for the past three to five years. We're going to look back at this and laugh. There's so much wealth that's going to be created. A wealth transfer is happening. Now you could stick your cup out and you can get some of this wealth that's being transferred or you can sit, or, or you can sit around all day long and talk about what if the electricity goes out? Where can you use Bitcoin at? Bitcoin is slow. What if you forget this key? Or you can start saying to yourself, what if those problems get solved? Then what? You don't invest in something after they've solved the problem. You invest in something because of the potential. If Bitcoin is trying to be a store of value and be digital gold, and it's only worth less than 200 and what, 60 or $50 billion, and the entire gold market cap is well over 10 to $12 trillion, you don't think that Bitcoin can't capture one of those trillion dollars, one of the, tr the trillion dollars that makes up that market cap, you would have to be a fool. So uh, please do me a favor and like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, make sure that you join my mailing list so that you could be notified because videos like this, YouTube does not like to promote these videos because this is a threat to the system, 100%. Also, if you're interested in dialoguing with me and having a conversation, follow me on Instagram, shoot me a DM, and we can have a conversation. For those of you who are interested in learning about how can you participate in this wealth transfer from the standpoint of an investor and from the standpoint of uh, an employee looking for employment, looking to be an entrepreneur, I created my tech academy. We currently have a free seven day trial. You are welcome to join, try it out, see if you like it. We're also running a coding boot camp right now. For those of you who are a part of the coding boot camp, make sure that you're following up with the lessons daily so that you don't fall behind. Also, as far as consultations, I am free for the rest of the week. Some of you who are lifetime students, you have not contacted me so that you can get your free consultation. You're a lifetime member. If you are a lifetime member and I've reached out to you via email, please reach out to me so that we can set up a consultation. For those of you who we've already had our consultations and this is for lifetime members, your success is my success. I have a vested interest in you being as successful as possible. So if you have any trouble, if you have any questions, if you don't understand something, I'm always an Instagram chat away. For those of you who know, we hop on Instagram chats all the time. I get on Zoom calls with you guys. Don't be shy. Use me. I am a resource. I am here to benefit you. You paid to become a lifetime member, right? Take advantage of that. And with that being said, if you can see me clearly and you can hear me clearly, put a one in the chat and we can get started. The ones are coming in. That's great. And with that being said, now let's first play what the former PayPal CEO said back in 2018. And then we're going to read the really, really, really great news. Mm -hmm. 
against the crypto universe, calling Bitcoin, quote unquote, the greatest scam in history, adding that it's a pump and dump scheme like anything. Back in April, the former CEO of PayPal came out swinging against the crypto universe, calling Bitcoin, quote unquote, the greatest scam in history, adding that it's a pump and dump scheme like anything the world has ever seen. You might remember he appeared on our show to discuss that. Now he's back with an even bolder call, saying Bitcoin is headed straight to zero. Let's bring in Bill Harris, the former PayPal CEO. Bill, welcome. Good Thank to see you. you in person. Thanks. You know, I'm, I'm delighted that you like buying into weakness because I think you'll have a lot of opportunity to do that. <laughs> oh, wow. yowza. Well, there you go. We'll see. The market will tell us. So what's different this time in terms of your call? Before you were skeptical, you said it was a scam. Now you're saying it's, it's, it is going to go to zero. Well, first, at first, I don't make calls. I'm not in that uh, business. And, sure. you know, I, I don't think I said it's going to zero. I said it's a whole lot. It's going to go eventually a whole lot closer to zero than a lot because there's just no value there. I mean, you can sum it up this way. Um, the cult of Bitcoin make many claims that it's instant, free, scalable, efficient, uh, secure, globally accepted, and useful. It is none of those things. And this is coming from the former payments. I so, as of today, I believe that we should be globally accepted with the news that we received today. Now, this is the former PayPal CEO. And then here's the news. PayPal embraces crypto, igniting market as mainstream adoption inches closer. Let's zoom in a little bit. It says crypto just got a shot at going mainstream in 2021. PayPal officially confirmed Wednesday it is entering the cryptocurrency market. The payments giant with 346 million active accounts around the world pledged to make cryptocurrency a funding source for purchases at its 26 million merchants worldwide. Sounds like we're moving pretty close to mass adoption to me. Wouldn't you say so? It says Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies rallied following the announcement which is one of several recent signs this year of mainstream corporate adoption of the decade old technology following MicroStrategy's $425 million deployment of its cash surplus into Bitcoin in a similar but more modest move by Square. Square just put in $50 million. I've been saying this now for well over two years on this channel. On my previous channel, I was saying the same thing as well. I've been saying this for years. Wall Street has already been involved behind the scenes. This is the first time that the retail crowd was able to beat the institutional crowd. And what they've been doing, going back to when Consensus had their event in New York back in 2017, they've been trying to shake us out. This is the actual, this is the chance for the small guy to actually win. Now, I just made a video the other day where we were talking about the IMF and a call for a new Bretton Woods moment. And they were talking about fiscally. Western countries have responded with twelve and a half trillion dollars of stimulus, twelve and a half trillion of stimulus. And then the Fed and other central banks, they kicked in another seven and a half trillion do you understand that that's about $20 trillion of money that was printed out of thin air? You mean to tell me that the entire cryptocurrency space is only worth $340 billion with a B? And you're telling me that we can't get a trillion? You really believe that we can't get $1 trillion? Only a fool would think that that's not possible. Only a fool would think that that's not possible. The stock market's well over a $90 trillion market cap of all of the stocks combined. That's what the asset class is worth. You mean to tell me that this asset class can't get to $1 trillion? I believe we're going to go, go way farther and beyond $1 trillion. Right? Now, understand, when you have a person sitting up here who is trying to tell you that Bitcoin's a scam. Ask them, then why are they not shorting it? 
if a person if a person knows why Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency is a scam, ask them, are they willing to put their money where their mouth is? Put take the other side of the trade. I want you to take the other side of Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, take the others, the other side of Chamath, Paul Tudor Jones, Mike Novogratz. Take the other side of the trade. If you believe that it's a scam. Because look what happened to the Tesla shorts. For years, everyone kept saying Tesla, Tesla sucks. Tesla doesn't have any earnings. Doesn't have any cash flow. Elon Musk is committing fraud. And Tesla ripped the face off the shorts. Ripped their faces off. Take the other side. Or you can listen to someone like myself or other people who's been up here accurately calling this as it's unfolded. If you've been doing your due diligence off of the information that I've given to you, you should be up over a hundred percent on your money. And if you've been dollar cost averaging, you should have a big bag now. A really, really big bag. And if you're late to the party, you should start accumulating. Some of you are asking yourself right now, should I be buying right now? Of course you should. But you should be dollar cost averaging, not FOMOing. What do I mean by that? Buy a little bit every week or buy a little bit every month so that you can have enough over time. The digital economy is here. Technology will rule the fourth industrial revolution. And people like Warren Buffett, People like Dan Pena, who I'm about to get to in a second, they represent the legacy financial system. They were able to benefit off of the inflation debt back fractional reserve system. See, think of the game Monopoly. And I always use this example. We're millennials, right? We're coming up behind the boomers. If I am playing the game of Monopoly against a boomer who they've already won the game of Monopoly. They've purchased all of the property and they've put hotels on all of the property. But the problem with this game of Monopoly is that it never gets a chance to be reset. So the wealthy, they gobble up all of the assets and they just hold them. So now you and I, we have to go and play that game, but we can never acquire none of the assets to properly play the game. And the game never gets a chance to restart or reset because the Fed constantly steps in and either cuts interest rates stimulates the economy or bails out companies and businesses that should have failed. See, the whole idea of capitalism is that you have the right to pursue free enterprise and make as much money as you want. And you also have the ability and the right to fail. But the Fed never allows the failure to happen, to allow these zombie companies to go bankrupt, to restructure, and to allow new entrepreneurs, new innovators to come into place and buy up those assets. There's too many gatekeepers in the way. So when you understand the whole idea of decentralized finance, you understand what's trying to be accomplished here, how we're trying to utilize code and let code be law, not individuals, but code be law and remove out all of the middlemen that's blocking the system. Prime example, I was reading an article in Bloomberg today where they were talking about race and how Black people, on average, we all we end up overpaying for our mortgages, right? Because of predatory lending and discrimination. Now, how true that is, I still have to do my due diligence. But understand that right now, if I have ETH as collateral, I can go make a you know a, a vault and get a loan and get some die, simply just by interacting with the smart contract. I don't have to go sit in a bank to get that loan. If I have collateral, it doesn't matter about my credit score. It doesn't matter about my ethnicity. It doesn't matter about my race. I can go right now and get a loan by just having ETH. That's all I need. I just need collateral. That's the future. The future is I don't have to walk into a bank and be treated like a criminal. I don't have to walk into a bank and have to worry about because of the color of my skin or my gender or the location and geography of where I'm located in the world that I don't have access to adequate banking. We're dealing with a global asset. This is, this is what's at stake here. And the powers that be, they feel like they're losing control. Pay attention to that. See, Satoshi, 
He was smart enough to think about currency. But the entire system needs to be revamped, right? So Bitcoin may be the decentralized currency, but when you start thinking about decentralized finance and why that's important, you begin to start to understand that all of these different protocols can coexist at one time because they're trying to solve different things. Now, I want to play Dan Pena because he, he's another one of these guys who, you know, he refers to us as BitFox. So let's listen to what he has to say. For those of you who've been following, you've probably heard me play this video before or, or seen me play this video before. But let's listen to it again. But one of the great calls I made is a year ago when BitFox was at $19,600, I said, it's over. Smart money. Sell half, keep half. My mentees lost billions. Because nobody listened to me. We got some bit fucks in there, I can tell. Too bad. <laughs> Shows you the stupidity. Shows you the stupidity. And I know who's behind Bitcoin. And it ain't some fucking Japanese guy in a cave. I know the guy. And when that comes out, you heard it here first. Bitcoin is going to zero. Zero. When it comes out, zero. <laughs> what so many people don't understand is that if, if you apply that logic, that knowing who created the cryptocurrency would make it go to zero, then by that logic, Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum should be going to zero, right? It should have went to zero already. Because we know Vitalik and Gavin Wood and Charles Hoskinson basically created Ethereum, right? So if by knowing the creator of a cryptocurrency is reason for it to go to zero, then why aren't those cryptocurrencies currently sitting at zero? If the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto came out today, wouldn't change anything because we have thousands of other cryptocurrencies that exist today and we know who created them. So that logic doesn't even make any sense. But see, part of being a con man is instilling confidence in your victims. So when you can say something so forcefully and zero, zero, it's easy to scare people. If you have a portfolio, what should you have in your portfolio? What do I constantly say? You should have silver. You should have gold. You should have cash flowing real estate. And then you should have crypto, right? Crypto can be 10 or 15% of your portfolio, but the gains in crypto are going to far outpace the gains in gold and silver and gold and silver mining companies and cash flowing real estate. I just purchased Chainlink at $7.70. Let's see what Chainlink is sitting at about what, a month ago? Excuse me. Chainlink right now is sitting at $10.82. I'm up probably what, 40, 50% of my money in a matter of a month. You don't get those type of gains in real estate. You don't get those type of gains in gold and silver. Gold and silver are meant to they're meant to preserve your wealth and preserve purchasing power. But if you're trying to build wealth, you're not building wealth in the $10 trillion market cap asset class. You're going to build wealth in crypto. You're not getting 15x gains in gold. Not happening. See, at a certain point, you, you have to evolve in your thinking and start to understand where we're going. I show this chart all the time about where is this at? Where's DeFi Pulse? $12 billion locked in DeFi. $12 billion. Go back to my older videos. That's just in 90 days. In 90 days, we went from $4 billion of money in decentralized finance. And in 90 days, we're at $12 billion. And we're still, we're early. This is a baby. This is a baby. If you're a part of my tech academy, I told you guys about Uniswap and how to use it and why Uniswap was important. 
why Uniswap was important. And if you did, you were able to get the airdrop of the 400 uni tokens and you were making money. Now, is that because of me? No, I'm not saying that's because of me. What I'm saying is you were exposed to that information because you were seeking it. And you should understand that if a person's providing you with information that's making you money, you should listen a little bit. Now, this isn't all roses and this isn't good news because not your keys, not your crypto. It's the same as when you buy crypto on Robinhood. You don't have access to the private keys. Therefore, your crypto can be confiscated and taken from you if you're utilizing PayPal because it's going to be settled in fiat. Right. So I want you to make sure that you're paying attention and you understand that and why that's important. And I always tell you guys, get a ledger, learn how to manage your own private keys. Do not trust an exchange. I got burned with Mt. Gox. I lost the I should be worth millions of dollars today. I lost a lot of crypto on Mt. on the Mt. Gox exchange. So learn that. So let's finish reading the article. It says Coindesk first reported PayPal was planning a move into crypto in June, citing anonymous sources. Yeah, right. A month later, Coindesk reported the Paxos exchange had been selected to support PayPal in its crypto endeavors. Watch this important part here. In a blog post Wednesday, PayPal said the pandemic had driven the need for digital payments of all sorts. How long have I been sitting up here saying that they're going to eliminate cash, that we're moving to a cashless society? You cannot look at Bitcoin as being a scam or a Ponzi scheme when your governments are creating regulations and rules around the asset. They would not be creating rules and regulations and utilizing the technology if they were planning to outlaw it. Because in all honesty, Monero is better than Bitcoin as far as technology is concerned. You know, Monero is my favorite coin. Monero is what people think they're buying when they buy Bitcoin. If anything may get outlawed and banned, it'll be Monero because it's too good at privacy. Digital payments are here to stay. I just was talking to you about central bank digital currencies the other day. You think that this is all happening by mistake? This is by design. Pay attention. Although the move had been in planning since at least late last year, and following PayPal's short-lived dalliance with the Facebook-spawned Libra project. Libra failed. Beginning in early 2021, PayPal customers will be able to instantly convert their selected cryptocurrency balance to fiat currency with certainty of value and no incremental fees, PayPal said. Its merchants will have no additional integrations or fees as all transactions will be settled with fiat currency at their current PayPal rates. In effect, cryptocurrency simply becomes another funding source inside the PayPal digital wallet, adding enhanced utility to cryptocurrency holders. While addressing previous concerns surrounding volatility, cost, and speed of cryptocurrency-based transactions, PayPal said. Not your keys. As bullish as the Bitcoin market as bullish for the Bitcoin market as this announcement has proven to be. An initial review of PayPal's crypto service terms underscores that a go it slow mindset still pervades. Critical cap limits who buyers are. Critical caps limit who buyers are. How much they can buy and what they can actually do with their PayPal source crypto. For starters, PayPal is refusing to hand over customer keys. Very key here. But let's go back. Because you constantly heard people like Peter Schiff say, oh my God, you know, Bitcoin has no utility. You can't use it anywhere. You just mine it and hold it in the wallet. Well, that's not true now. You can use your crypto at 26 million merchants now. What's the excuse now? See, there's a difference between money and currency. Money should have three use cases. It should be a medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a store of value. That's why gold and silver was always used as money and no other commodity was, right? Because you can basically 
breed more cattle if you use cattle as money. It's easy to create more of it, right? It's easy to find more oil. It's not easy to find more gold, right? This is why gold has always been used as money because it just it has unique properties that you can't find anywhere else, right? So now, Bitcoin is a currency as of today. It's not money yet because it's not a good store of value because of the volatility and it's not a unit of account, but it's becoming a medium of exchange. And see, when you understand that, where we're going, and then you understand, I love gold, I own it. But the problem is, I'm not lugging around 20, 20 ounces of gold to go buy a car. So you will always need someone else to take custody of your gold, meaning you will always have to trust a third party. If you live in a country that is oppressing you, look what's happening in Nigeria right now. And you wanted to flee the country. You can't flee with all of your gold, right? You're not going to be able to get, get across the border with a whole bunch of big gold bars, right? Especially when you have the SARS unit shooting you down and killing you. That's not going to work. You're not going to be able to get on a plane with a bunch of gold bars. So you would have to trust someone. The whole idea of crypto is removing trust. With Bitcoin, all I need to do is know my seed or know my private key. I can take my money with me anywhere in the world because it's digital. It's digital. Right? So it's it's important that you understand that, that use case. So having digital money is important. Now, do I think that going into a cashless society is a good idea? No, but that's where we're going. So you have a choice. Do you want to live in a cashless society where you have you have to use the central bank digital currency or do you want choice? It's up to you. But at a certain point, you know, you have to understand where we're going. And again, I think Monero is better than Bitcoin. But now we have to think about it from an investment standpoint. The marketplace chooses and decides what is money. You and I do not decide. I, I believe in a free market, right? So the market should decide what's money. And right now, the big money is saying they prefer B Bitcoin to be money. Now, the more that Bitcoin pumps, once the altcoins start pumping, we're going to get rich. We're going to get filthy rich. Those of us who've been preparing, been prepared for this for a while. Now, I came across an interesting thread from um, Ultra XBT, and he said, I read the entire PayPal terms and conditions for its services. I effing hate it. Here are the highlights. You don't actually hold any of the crypto at all. They want you to KYC, but they also require a taxpayer identification number. You cannot withdraw your crypto ever. You can't send your crypto to anyone or use it to pay for goods or services. And he basically highlighted some stuff. And I agree with this. So that's what I was saying. This, this is it's bullish in terms of onboarding people. But for those of us who we're into privacy and security, I wouldn't be using this service. Right. I, I You know me. I believe in my ledger, not your keys, not your crypto. Run a full node or I'll get a hardware wallet. It says right here. And this is from the terms. You will not hold the digital crypto asset themselves in your crypto asset balance. All custody of and trading in crypto assets is performed for us by our licensed service providers, Paxos Trust Company, LLC. Let's move forward. I got my speakers in the way. It says required identifying information is name, physical address, date of birth, and taxpayer identification number. And then right here, it says you will not be able to transfer crypto assets from your cryptocurrencies hub to another crypto wallet. So again, while this is bullish for the space, you know, I I don't recommend any of you guys use this. It's PayPal Robinhood. Yes, 100%. 100%. You know, I don't I don't think that you guys should be using anything like this. Um this is the Square announcement. I didn't get a chance to cover this, but this is old news. This is from October 8th. It says Square Inc invests 50 million dollars into Bitcoin because Jack Dorsey believes that uh Bitcoin's going to be the native currency or for the internet because the internet just doesn't currently have a native currency and um many of you don't understand that this is financial this is fintech bitcoin's a protocol it's technology 
uh, Ethereum's technology. All of these different cryptocurrencies and protocols are tech. It's fintech. So, you know, if we're going to, if we're moving into a, you know, digital economy, then we need to make sure that our money is going to be digitized as well. Um, so it's, it's important that you just pay attention to these things and you understand where we're going and so that you can position your portfolio and your investments properly so that you're not left behind. Because again, as I said before, it doesn't matter what you think this is going to happen with or without you. It says the investment underscores Square's purpose of economic empowerment. Uh, October 8th, 2020, Square Inc. announced today that it has purchased approximately 4,709 Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of, excuse me, $50 million. Square believes that cryptocurrency is an instrument of economic empowerment and provides a way for the world to participate in a global monetary system which aligns with the company's purpose. The investment represents approximately 1% of Square's total assets as of the end of the second quarter in 2020. Just 1%. You know, just 1%. And you're going to start to see more and more of that, especially as inflation starts to creep up. Right? More and more and more. It's true, you won't be able to move your crypto out of PayPal. No, you won't. That's why you should not put your crypto in PayPal, right? This is just going to be more of a way, a place for, for example, Roger Ver always, he always, this is, and this is a, a, a honest critique about Bitcoin and Blockstream. Roger Ver always says this and states this, that, you know, they don't want Bitcoin to be a medium of exchange. They want Bitcoin to be slow and efficient so that they can basically get fees and make it a store of value. The whole idea of a currency is I need to be able to use it somewhere and spend it, right? So by being able to have access to 26 million merchants worldwide, that now gives you a chance to be able to use your crypto as a medium of exchange and spend your crypto, right? Because at a certain point, you're like, you want to use your crypto. Now, I wouldn't spend my crypto because I understand that there will only be 21 million Bitcoin. And every, <laughs> every time a block is mined, that's less supply coming out of the marketplace, right? That's, 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 that's supply. Basically someone's getting that supply, right? So you're basically, you own like a rare item, a collector's item, right? Cause Bitcoin's a deflationary currency, right? Whereas the dollar is an inflationary currency. Like, I want you to think about this. The dollar cannot be a stable currency or store of value. If it loses 3% on average every year of its purchasing power, that doesn't make any sense. You literally, if you hold dollars, you're losing 3% of your purchasing power every single year. Whereas if you hold Bitcoin because it's deflationary, meaning that after each halvening, less and less Bitcoin will be subsidized in the following block, right? When you start thinking about that, you, you understand more and more is going on. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, go look at the Bitcoin block reward halving countdown and you'll understand why every four years the block reward gets cut in half. This is what makes Bitcoin scarce and hard money, right? Like this, this is this is why it's important. And I just posted that in in the um, the chat. So when you understand hard money and you understand what's happening, think about this. Right now, a group of men and women that make up the Federal Reserve Board, they get in a room and they decide what the price of money is going to be, who's going to get bailed out. Who's going to win and who's going to lose? That to me is not a fair economy. When basically the government gets to decide who are the winners and losers. I feel that at the end of the day, companies should be allowed to fail. Businesses should be allowed to file bankruptcy and restructure. Those who are efficient with capital and how they deploy it should be rewarded by being able to step in and buy up those businesses. There, there, there will be no bailouts in Bitcoin. There, there are no Jerome Powell's, Janet Yellen's, Ben Bernanke's. They don't exist in Bitcoin. Code is law. Very, very important. Now, in my tech academy, for those of you who are part of the academy, we are getting ready to dive heavily into DeFi, decentralized finance. For those of you who are interested in learning about Crypto and blockchain technology, 
I have my tech academy. We have a free seven day trial. You're welcome to try it out. See if you like it, stick around. The next course that we're going to launch is DeFi. And I, this article is old. David Hoffman is someone that you should definitely follow him and the other guy, Ryan, they're from uh, bankless. I believe this article is a really, really good article because he talks about the digital finance stack. And as I said earlier, Satoshi was very smart in creating currency, but you have to go much further than just currency with just Bitcoin, right? You need other forms of finance to really, truly revolutionize and change the system. And this is where DeFi comes into play. Now, understand that ETH is going to be extremely important because you're going to pay your gas fees in ETH, right? So it doesn't matter which ERC20 token you're using above the stack, no matter how high you may go above the stack, you still need ETH for gas fees. So another thing too, because some of you guys, you um made a bet with me that ETH 2.0 would not be launching this year. Well, we have some good news and I'm going to get back to the article in a second. I just popped in my mind. Ethereum 2.0 deposit contract may come in days in phase zero in December, which is basically phase one. It says first of Ethereum's 2.0 phases, phase one seems to be nearing, possibly arriving at the end of this year as the protocol's deposit contract is said to be ready for launch any day now. The upcoming deposit contract is a much anticipated one of the final steps towards the phase zero rollout as it will enable ETH transactions between the original Ethereum and its second iteration. I am expecting news about the deposit contract any day, said ETH 2.0 and consensus developer Ben Eddington in a recent announcement. He added, stressing that this is not an official statement. Basically, as I understand it, we are good to go. Deposit contract in the next few days. Beacon chain Genesis six to eight weeks later. So for those of you who bet me $50, remember guys, I remember we made a $50 bet. I bet that ETH 2.0 would launch this year. A few of you made a bet that it would not happen. It's happening. So I would like my $50 in Ethereum, guys, for those of you who made the bet. I would like it because it's here. I've been telling you. And this is going to be huge when you start thinking about the fact of there may be other chains like Avalanche and Cardano and Tezos that's trying to compete for the smart contract you know, uh, space. But at the end of the day, all of the tooling and developers and the brain power and the ecosystem is on Ethereum. And it's very hard to replicate that. Like people are not going to just jump up and just toss, you know, all of the infrastructure that was built on top of Ethereum, just toss it out the window and then go jump on Avalanche or jump on Cardano or Tezos or any other one of these smart contract proof of stake blockchains. It's just, it, I mean, they're good. They're going to compete, but they have a long way to go before they can compete with Ethereum. So it says, this means that phase zero, AKA beacon chain could possibly arrive this December earlier this year. Afri, I'm not even going to say his last name because I don't want to mess it up. Release manager at blockchain infrastructure company, parity technologies and ex Ethereum developer estimated that it might happen in November. Eddington is also warning people to be careful of fake deposit contracts and launch pad front ends, which are expected to increase in number with official announcement nearing look out for official announcement do not send eth to random contracts this is not decentralized finance DeFi. he said yeah make sure guys you definitely pay attention to that now remember uh for those of you who are part of the academy we were talking about the token sets protocol i'm in the process of working to put together a token set for us of different DeFi projects that we can buy into remember you have to do your own due diligence I'm going to make sure that the projects that are part of the token set, because basically a token set is like buying into like the S and P index, right? Like you're buying into a multiple of different DeFi assets. I'm going to pick the DeFi assets that I believe are going to perform the best. And then you will have a chance to buy into that token set. Um, so again, I'm still researching this, making sure that everything is legit. 
I like to test things with my own money before I bring it to the community. But um, that's most likely where we're going to go. And again, this DeFi course that I'm working on, it's going to be really, really big. So it's probably going to take me probably like a month to put together this course because we're really getting into, you know, economics. And I wanted to really uh, read um, Brian's article in a second. And one last thing I wanted to read here. Um, right here, it says. So this is Vitalik right here speaking. It says Buterin added that introduction to a stake based consensus and ultra high scalability are both going to be in the hands of the Ethereum users much sooner than a lot of people think. And it's been a while. It's been about a good like four years now they've been talking about this whole idea of Ethereum 2.0, like three to four years. So it's important. It says proof of it be about three years. Proof of stake and sharding are two things Buterin named that ETH 2.0 is aiming to accomplish that ETH 1.0 doesn't have. A property the team is not willing to sacrifice, said the founder, while drawing similarities with Bitcoin is the principle of not relying on super node assumptions and honest majority assumptions that we want Ethereum to be a system that can run and operate without relying on some super powerful computer. We want the system to, if need be, be able to operate entirely as just a collection of consumer laptops. You know, and this gets back to the whole idea of ASIC miners, Bitmain, China, cheap electricity, trying to get away from this whole idea of proof of work. Again, proof of stake has not proven itself to be as secure as proof of work. It just hasn't. Right now, Bitcoin with proof of work is proven to be secure. But you have people like Richard Hart who they are of the mindset that you're basically overpaying for security that you don't need. So it'll be interesting to see where this is going to go. Remember, if you upgrade to ETH 2.0 with the 32 ETH that you need to stake, you can't come back to the original chain. So just keep that in mind, and which is why I want to get to this article, because I really think that this is a good article and I'm going to share this. This is old. So, yes, some of the information may be a little outdated, but I think that this is a good article that I'm about to share with you. I just put it in the chat. So let's zoom in a little bit. Take a sip of water. I said, Brian, his name is David Hoffman. Excuse me. It says the following article is summarized in this section an image below. Ethereum is a set of layers that build on top of each other. Each layer provides the foundation and the stability for the layer on top of it to express itself effectively. Each layer also has its own metric that builds in response to the market forces inside of the Ethereum economy. So you have the base layer where Ethereum is the ETH staking rate. Then you have MakerDAO. When you think about MakerDAO, I want you to think of like the Federal Reserve Bank. And this is why like some people, they sit up here and they say that, you know, Ethereum is basically trying to like replicate central, you know, central banking. And in certain instances, you can say that that's true because there are certain aspects that, re you know, resemble uh, CFI, centralized finance. And then there's other aspects that don't. But you have MakerDAO. That's going to be like the reserve bank. And then you're going to have DAI. That's going to be like the reserve currency. Right. Then you have the stability fee, the DAI savings rate. You have lending and borrowing layer two. and You have the application layer. So let me show you what I'm talking about right here. Right. This is the DeFi stack. Right. So at the bottom... You have ETH, then you have Maker, you have Compound, you have Synthetics, then you have the applications that are above it. So when you start thinking about DeFi, all of these applications, all of these different protocols, all of these different ERC20 tokens are running on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So this is why am I talking about this? When you look at Bitcoin, again, whether this is intentionally or by design, it's really only good for being a store of value as of right now. That's what they're trying to sell it as, right? Digital gold. But you can't really do that much with it. When you look at Ethereum, you're looking at an entire stack. I mean, you have insurance on top of the Ethereum protocol, right? You have derivatives platforms on top of the Ethereum blockchain, right? You have so many different dApps. You have gaming, you know, different uh, gaming protocols being built on top of Ethereum. There's so much 
that you can do with ETH. You can't do these things with Bitcoin. So when we start talking about investing in the future and where things can possibly go, this is the value proposition that you have with Ethereum. Very, very important. So this is, and when you look at the market cap, you know, ETH's a $44 billion asset. $44 billion. I can easily see Ethereum getting to $10,000. And people think I'm crazy when I say that. If if Ethereum 2.0 is anything that they're expecting it to be, if it's half as good, you don't think the value of this is good? You don't think that it could probably flip Bitcoin one day? What if ETH flips Bitcoin? Or what if what if Tezos or Cardano or one of these other, you know, proof of stake smart contract blockchains decide that, you know, they get their act together? Only worth three billion dollars. This is the investment potential that we have. Right? 10x, 15x returns. I'll I'll take a 90, I'll take a 90% drop any day for a 15x return on my money. But let's go back to the article. <clears throat> Just want to read a little bit of this and then we'll get to some charts and look at some different projects. Right? So it says layer zero, the global bond market. And this is what I really want you to start thinking about when you think about ETH, right? Because for all of these protocols to properly work, you still need ETH for gas fees. Right? It says metric, the ETH stake rate. Ethereum 2.0 will enable ETH staking. Those with 32 ETH can validate network transactions on their computer and earn interest for doing so. The amount of interest varies depending on the validator pool size. You can see ETH 2.0 staking rates here. The proof of stake network is the beginning of a singular digital bond market. With ETH as the currency, those with capital are able to stake and receive a low risk return. This return is proportionate to the size of capital and total time staked. It is a stable investment strategy for those who want access to low risk maintenance, exposure to ETH and Ethereum's digital economy. In the traditional bond market, you can purchase a bond note or bill from the US Treasury. Upon redemption of the bond note or bill, Purchasers often receive 1% to 3% more than they paid for. These rates are variable. However, as these securities are freely traded on the secondary market and altogether generate the yield curve, in other words, when you purchase a bond, you stake your USD in the network of the US economy and you receive a guarantee return for that proportional return that is proportional to the size of capital in the time of maturity, staking the bond. Now, I want you to think about this. Essentially, what he's saying is that when you buy a treasury, right, you buy government debt for 30 years, you're basically locking your money up, right? That's time value locked. So you're saying, I'm willing to buy this treasury, this bond for this country, because I believe in 30 years that this country is going to be just as productive, if not more. And they're going to be able to honor, they're going to be able to honor this agreement and pay back. So when you start looking at ETH, I want you to start looking at it the same way that when you see people actually putting money in DeFi, right? That's people voting with their dollars and saying that, I believe that ETH is going to exist three to five years from now. I believe that the Ethereum ecosystem is going to be more valuable, more scalable, in the next three to five to 10 to 15 years. And this is what you start seeing. You see like, uh, time, uh, total value locked, right? That's the time value locked. Total amount of you know value that you're locking in DeFi. That's $12 billion. And you can see, look, it went from 4 billion in 90 days to 12. And if you look at it for the year, look at this. You know, like this is insane. It went from $677 million to where we had $12 billion and this is tiny. So when you start thinking about people buying ETH, right, you need 32 ETH in order to be a validator. Well, that's buying up supply, right? Because every person who wants to be a validator, they're going to need 32 ETH. So that, that basically gives ETH a floor because you're going, you can't sell the ETH because you need the ETH in order to be a validator. So everyone who wants to be a validator is going to basically buy up that supply. So it's really important that when you start thinking about where we're going, where we're at, 
in the importance of these different things. And this goes back to the whole idea about PayPal, right? If you listened to the former PayPal CEO, when he was saying to you that it's going to zero or close to it, you would have missed out on these returns. See, people like me who understands where this technology is going and understand the economics behind it and the tokenomics behind it, you need ETH in order to be a staker, period. And you need 32, you must maintain 32 ETH. Well, if you must maintain 32 ETH, then that creates buying pressure for Ethereum because I'm not going to sell it because if I sell it, then I don't have 32 ETH. I can't be a staker. And by being a staker, I can earn passive fees. I can earn a passive income by doing that. Very, very important. So the same way that miners validate transactions, now you're going to have stakers doing that and earning those fees and earning those rewards, which is important to think about. And I want to play one last video from Dan Penna, and then I'll take some questions and go from there. So let's listen to this. Kids, I mean, uh, don't uh, write me about Bitcoin, please. I mean, I keep telling you, oh, this is for the YouTube. You know, Bitcoin could be a thousand tomorrow, just because it's eight hundred, eight thousand today. I mean, just I don't give a fuck. So don't ask me. <laughs> when it was at nineteen thousand, I said sell half, keep half. That's the only thing I said, which is just smart trading. And you didn't do that, so don't ask me now. But a, a, a smart, rich guy I talked to last night, he said, it's like these guys found a $1,000 bill in the street, or they found a diamond in the street, and the diamond went up in value, and now they're investors. They're professional investors all of a sudden, because they found a fucking $1,000 bill in the street. 99.999% of the people that own Bitcoin are fucking morons. Retarded imbeciles that's just it <laughs> some of you in this room fall into that category you found a thousand dollar bill in the street just say well i found a thousand dollar bill in the street if you found a thousand dollar bill in the street what would you do with it you go you cash it right you wouldn't hoard it would you it's exactly the same you found you found some shit in the street that happened to go up in value so don't, don't ask me anymore. Go, go fuck yourselves, please. <laughs> I, I just, I love watching these videos. People like Dan Pena, they've been wrong for over a decade. They've been wrong for over 10 years. At a certain point, you have to say to yourself that... That is the definition of insanity to listen to someone keep telling you that something is going to go to zero and it doesn't go to zero. For someone to keep telling you that something's a Ponzi scheme, yet the IMF, the ECB, the Fed, they're all getting together and talking about central bank digital currencies. To listen to people like Peter Schiff tell you that it has no utility because you can't use it anywhere. And then PayPal comes out and says you can now use it at 26 million different merchants. Do you want to make gains or do you want to listen to idiots on the internet? Do you want to make gains or do you want to listen to fools on the internet? Now, if you're broke and you just can't buy none, that's okay. Now, understand, you do not have to buy a whole Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a stock. It is a currency, right? So that means that you can buy fractions of a Bitcoin. You could buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. You could buy $200 worth of Bitcoin. It's called Satoshis, right? The same way you can get a penny, you can have a penny of a dollar. You can have a nickel of a dollar. You can have a quarter of a dollar. You can have two quarters, 50 cents of a dollar. You don't need a whole Bitcoin. Buy what you can afford. Also, Bitcoin isn't the only one. I like Monero better than Bitcoin when it comes to privacy. Different cryptocurrencies, they have different pros and different cons. Understand and know what you're buying and why you're buying it. That's why I created my tech academy to educate you so you can understand that different currencies offer different things. People look at Bitcoin as a surveillance coin. Why? Because it's open. You can see everything on the ledger. Whereas Monero is a privacy coin.
You can't see anything that's happening on the ledger. You don't know how much money I have in my wallet. They utilize confidential transactions and ring signatures, right? Different cryptocurrencies have different pros and cons. Find the ones that you like and invest. Educate yourself. Don't miss out. Because the big boys are coming. Yes, do I expect... I made a video the other day. I expect volatility. I expect the 30%, 40% drop. Guess what happens when my crypto drops 40%? Dollar cost average. I go into my savings account. I take any cash flow that I'm making. And I say, give me the Bitcoin that you're selling. Give it to me. Oh, you want to sell your ETH? Give it to me. Someone just put in a comment section. 32 ETH today will cost you $12,463. How much do you think it's going to cost you for 32 ETH once the chain finally launches, the main chain launches, and people start moving over to proof of stake? Think about it. So let's go over here and look at some charts. See what's going on. Look at this pump. Look at this. Look at this. No, I um, Samiri, uh, if if you believe in uh, if if you're talking about the rainbow charts, I believe you're talking about the guy Plan B. Um, that that whole idea of a stock the flow model was proven to be inaccurate in certain instances because of the way that they're accounting for the data. Um, I'll probably do a video on that and, and include that in the next video that we were doing. I you know I look at these things as more of just reference points. I don't base my investment strategy off of an indicator. Um, you know, I base my investment strategies off of a macro theme. So, you know, when I'm putting together an investment strategy, I first want to look at the macro. What, what do I see happening and what needs to continue to happen for my investment thesis to be correct? So I'm buying gold and silver, right? I always show off my gold. I always show off my silver. I'm buying that to preserve purchasing power for the wealth that I've already was able to build. And I buy precious metal mining stocks because I understand that they're going paper, paper assets will always outperform any other asset. And I believe that central banks and governments will continue to keep devaluing currencies because they are trying to fight off deflation. Right. That's that's what it all boils down to. If you read the book, The Price of Tomorrow, you'll understand what, why am I saying that, why I'm saying this. So my thesis for staying long gold and silver, staying long precious metal mining stocks, staying long crypto is I understand governments have to monetize debt. We have an aging population. We have a ton of unfunded liabilities and promises. These print, these pension programs and all of these different, you know, uh, socialized medical programs that they're creating are only going to get bigger and they're going to have to monetize the debt. As long as that's happening, I'm going to stay long in the assets that I have. That's the macro theme. Then we start going down to the micro. Okay. I'm looking at Chainlink. And I'm saying to myself, like I said earlier, if the smart contract platforms are going to be successful, the only way that you can get external data from the outside world into the blockchain in a trustless way is through an Oracle. Okay, well, that means Chainlink's valuable on a micro level, right? Because I understand that you need that in order for that to happen. Now I start looking at the derivatives market. I look at synthetics. I look, how big is the derivatives market right now just in finance? We're talking about quadrillions, literally, a qu over a quadrillion dollars. Because you're able to rehypothecate an asset, meaning that like you can lever an at you can basically create an asset on top of an asset on top of an asset that doesn't even exist. Okay, well, if that asset class is that big over one quadrillion, I'm doing about four quadrillion dollars, excuse me. I believe that synthetics can capture 20, 30 billion dollars of that easily. Okay, that's a micro level investment. So I'm buying into the synthetics idea. I'm, I want to buy, I want to invest in that because I believe that it can happen. When I look at the maker token, the governance token, and I understand that they're going to basically burn it as more die is created. Okay, so I'm looking at a macro theme. I'm saying, okay, ETH's going to continue to grow. So when I'm putting my investment strategies together, these are the things that I'm thinking about why I'm putting my money in certain projects. I don't just buy something because, you know, BitBoy Crypto and uh, Chico Crypto said, hey, you know, this is the new coin that's going to pump 5X. 
Can that happen? Absolutely. But I don't think that that's a, I don't think that that's a credible way of investing or an intelligent way of investing by just following what someone else is telling you. I think buying things because you understand why, right? So I don't just look at an indicator with a rainbow. Like I have a, I have a strategy as to why I'm buying things. I just use indicators as more of a reference point. Like I like the Ichimoku cloud because my trading system, I, for those of you who know, I trade futures is based upon, you know, Hakanashi bars, um, order flow based upon dynamic trend trading bars, dynamic range bars, and off of the Ichimoku cloud. Like right now I could pull up the cloud and I can know immediately which direction I should be trading, right? I know I should be long because price is above the cloud and it's above the Tinkinson and the, um, and the Chico span, right? It's, it's above all of the, uh, the literally above everything. It's above the cloud. It's above Tinkinson, Kijinson, it's above everything, right? So I know why I'm, you know, um, buying and going long. I could just look at the cloud and tell why I'm long. Then you start looking at other factors. You start looking at momentum. You start looking at who's buying, why are they buying? We start seeing a lot of institutional and money coming in now. This now is the setup for us to go much higher, is what I believe. Now, with the election coming up, I believe that Trump is going to lose now. I, I, I'm really more and more starting to see that the Democrats are going to try to rig this and they're going to try to basically um, steal this election with, with rigged votes, similar to uh, Al Gore and George Bush. I don't know. You know, I was a baby back then, but, you know, I read a lot of books in history. So I believe that they're going to do something like that, uh, something similar to that, like to that effect where the Democrats are going to try to steal the election by cheating with the votes in certain states. And I believe initially you're probably going to see a major drop in all assets because that's just the way markets operate. So we could get a big drop in stocks. We could get a big drop in crypto. Uh, and I believe me when I tell you I have some money ready to um, pounce on that when that happens. So. Uh, I didn't I didn't lose you with that one. Um, Trump's going to lose. The Democrats are going to steal this election. They're going to cheat with the voting or with the early voting. And they're going to do the same thing that George Bush did to Al Gore. So uh, we could put some money on that one. I mean, you guys already owe me for um, Ethereum. So I'm playing with the house money. Put a $25 bet on it. I love Chainlink, man. Chainlink's going to be big. I'm telling you, man. Chainlink's like the more the more I start diving into the technology and just the things that they're doing, man. It's excuse me. That's going to be a big project, man. Big project, big, big, big project. That I throw you for a loop. I, I it shouldn't. I mean, I, I constantly tell you guys that all the time. Uh, history doesn't repeat itself, but it damn sure rhymes, right? It doesn't. History doesn't repeat itself, but it damn sure rhymes, um, right? The Republicans did it to the Democrats. I see the same thing happening to uh, the Republicans this time. Right. The the only way that Trump can win is based upon the economy, honestly. And with the economy being in, in the Democrats want the economy this way, gives them a chance to win. Sports betting is really is sports betting is big. Uh, John Lycos. So you remember the bet you said, Eli, I got in fifty dollars for you when it officially drops. Leave your ETH address uh, in the form of the academy. No problem, John. I'll do that. No problem. I'll definitely do that. Um, so just like I was saying, guys, I you know, what's going on with the stimulus right now, right? Right, what's going on with this with the stimulus right now? Uh, did they did they finally pass it? Let's look at let's look it up right now. I have a Bloomberg subscription. Um let's pull it up and see what's going on. I 
I pay for this every month. Let's see what's going on. Let's see, right? Because I've, I've been accurately predicted. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't see them passing a stimulus, right? So let's see what's going on. Um. Yep, no stimulus. No stimulus passed. I told you guys, I, I, there's no way that they're going to pass the stimulus right before an election. The Democrats and the Republicans, they don't want to make it look like they, they basically work together and let one get get the, the heads up on another one. There we go. I told you guys, I accurately predicted that as well. <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm not... I'm not here picking a side. I'm not, you know me, I'm I'm not a Republican nor a Democrat. I believe that they're both just the left and right wing of the same bird. So I'm I'm not here because I'm some social justice warrior. I'm not some liberal or anything like that. Uh, I, I tend to lean to the right in, on most issues. I'm more of an independent. Uh, but I'm just telling you, like, I just, I don't, like, I, I see them stealing this from Trump, honestly. You know, so... Uh, I, I probably I'll probably do a breakdown um, about uh, Biden's tax plan. I've been hearing a lot of rumblings about it. I'll probably do a breakdown about that. I'm ready to lose my crypto for IRS forms. <laughs> listen, man, I got hacked. That's what. Listen, IRS comes to me. I got hacked. You know, I I don't I don't know what happened. Some hackers. I I was on a I was on a dark net. I was browsing on the dark web, and you know I got hacked, and they took all my crypto. So, <laughs> um, again, when when we get into the Great Reset, right? You know, a lot of we 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 constantly talk about the Great Reset on this. That's part of bringing about, you know, the fourth industrial revolution and the great reset. You must get order out of chaos. Right. So when you when you understand that, if you read Behold the Pale Horse, 1984, um, A Brave New World. Right. If you read the book uh, Rules, uh, Rules for Radicals. Right. Obama loved that book. Like if, if you understand the way the Democrats are thinking, they believe that out of order, you will get chaos. Problem, reaction, solution. What did Rahm Emanuel say? Uh, Rahm Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste. So these people, they understand problem, reaction, solution. And they want it to be chaotic so that they can then come in with the whole idea of order. So I, I, I believe that the public's going to be upset. They're going to be angry. They're going to protest. They're going to take their anger out on the, pro on the police. Many of the police, they don't have anything to do with what's going on. Right. And then it's going to be a feedback loop because the public hates the police and the police are going to begin to hate the po uh, the public. And you're going to have this, you know, civil war going on back and forth. You're going to have the Republicans versus the Democrats, which is going to keep everyone divided, keeping everyone going back and forth by the powers that be, you know, to figure out how they're going to uh, usher in this uh, great reset. Right. Right. So when you when you when you understand that, when you understand that all of this you know, division is going to be used as a, you know, um, a launch pad to usher in the new world order. Then you, you, you can just see what's going to happen before it happens. Right. Right. So it's, it's important that you just understand that. Right. You know, for me, I don't have a dog in the fight. I understand what's going to happen. Like you're going to take your vaccine, you're going to take your microchip and you're going to go to work and we're going to have a, a color system just like China, where it's going to be green, yellow, or red. And you're going to basically take your medicine and be a good sheep. Right? Most most people are sheeple. Right? That that whole idea of a uh, patriot revolution went out the window when look how easily they were able to shut down the economy. No one batted an eye. No one revolted. No one rebelled. Everyone went home, put on their mask, and shut the hell up. And that's exactly what's going to continue to happen, right? You know, all of these people, they 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 talk all of this, you know, I'm here for the American Revolution, me and Alex Jones, and then, you know, they put fluoride in your water, you don't do anything. They bring trainees to your kid's school, you don't do anything. Right? <laughs> they tell you to wear a mask or you can't come into a location, 
you you follow you follow the rules, right? So it's like you can listen to these people who they want to you know you know uh, bloviate on the internet about how they're patriots and they're going to take back the country. Look what happened in Michigan, right? Those guys who were trying to kidnap the lady, ah, feds came and got them, locked them up. No no one fought back. No no patriot revolution. None of those things happen. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know, so, right, so you know, like I, I, I laugh when I hear like these these patriots, you know, and the MAGA people. We're going to take back our government and drain the swamp. No, you're not. You're going to do what you've been doing. You're going to put your mask on, and go to work, and do what you're told to do. That's what's going to happen, right? So, as far as the public is, though, back to your question, um. I believe that it's going to be chaos. I believe that people are going to be on the streets rioting, arguing, fighting more of what's been going on, taking it because see one thing you have to understand about psychology and especially as an investor, you have to really study psychology. When people feel hopeless and, and powerless, they don't they don't they don't really attack the real enemy. They'll deflect and try to attack an enemy that they feel is equal to them. Or that can't do anything back. It's like a bully, right? Like bullies properly, they, they purposely pick certain people, right? So the public, they're angry. They know who the problem is, wh where the problem lies, and who the problem, who are, what's the problems in society. But they're not going to take on the feds. They're not going to take on the government. They'd rather take their anger out on the police. Not the politicians who actually create the policy that the police follow, right? Like, they, they, they won't go after the root cause. They'll go after the soft target because that's what bullies do, right? P power, people who feel powerless or bullies, they go after soft targets. They're not going to go after what the real problems are in society. It's easy to go after the police. It's hard to, to elect good government, to find good government, to rebel against your government. People won't do that, right? So it's, it's, it's easy to see. So I, I can predict what's going to happen because it's been happening and I expect more of the same. I expect the sheeple to be sheep and get in line and take their vaccine, take their microchip and move forward. It's people like you and I, those of us who are intelligent enough to understand that. Nipsey Hussle said this the best. You cannot change the system protesting you cannot change the system by, quote unquote, trying to vote because there's too many ignorant people there. The American voter is probably the stupidest, probably the American voter is by far the least informed voter in the world. The American voter is the least informed. So you're not changing this by protesting or not. You know, you change this by getting some power, wealth and influence. You know, you change this by preparing you now you change this by making sure that you have the proper resources to be here after to be able to withstand and last. That's that's how you beat this. By being able to wait it out, by not having to be that person in the middle of the street arguing with a person because they have on a red hat. Right. Right. I'm not, you, if you think I'm you think I'm going to go out here and fight someone. Because they have a red hat on. I could care less what type of hat you wear. Just like if I saw a person with a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. Great. Your apparel has no impact on me. You can wear the MAGA hat all you want. Just like you can wear a black. Like when you see people out here. You see adults that are in their, their 30s and 40s. And they're in the middle of the street fighting with each other because you have on a red hat and I have on a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. You know, psychologically, that you're in for you're in for some trouble, right? You can't reason with these people. You think that you're gonna you th you think that you're going to be able to sit down and have an intelligent conversation with a person who's willing to fight someone because they have on a hat or a t-shirt? Come on. <laughs> So, no problem, Zoilio. I'll get you out of here. Have a good day, Zoilio. Bye bye. 
Uh, Lamont Ellis, I, I think buying land is amazing. I think that, the, again, making sure that you have the resources to last hereafter um, is important, right? Um, networking with people, finding you like militia groups, right? I'm not saying you should join a militia group. What I'm saying is that you should be thinking the way that they think. Finding you 10 or 15 people that are aligned with your way of thinking and trying to build with them. Right. You know, I, I think that that's important that you find people who you can align with and build with them. Right. And, st and instead of trying to, you know, change everyone else, focus on trying to change your situation. I think that so many of us, because we feel powerless or hopeless, that we know we just lash out. And I think that that's the wrong thing to do. I think you need to look inward. I think you need to find like-minded people and i think you need to find communities as well you know that you can build with and 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 start there so you may not have enough money to buy land but all 10 of you can come together and buy some land you might not have enough money to you know buy enough gold and silver right you may not have enough to buy enough gold and silver but you can all come together and buy gold and silver and buy you know perishable items you know non-perishable goods and stuff like that and just make sure that you're prepared right build Build with people. You know, I, I think that that's 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 important. Like just, you know, making sure that you have, you know, food, water, shelter, making sure you know how to hunt, grow food, uh, making sure each one of you have a special skill set. Right. So, like, think about it. if I have a group of 10, you know, you're going to be the guy that's really good at, you know, the the medical stuff. We all should know a little bit of something. But one guy specializes in something and maybe the woman specializes in something else like really th start thinking that way. And I think that if you do that, you'll be OK. If you're in a room and you're the smartest person or if you're in a room and everyone depends on you, you're in the wrong room or you're in the wrong group. Right. Everyone should be able to work together and everyone should have a unique skill that they can build from. Right. You know, um, now, uh. Jorge Diaz basically said, um, oh, man, it's hard just finding one. I agree. It's very hard with finding one. Um, very, very hard. Someone said property taxes. Where's that at? Um, someone said property taxes. I don't see it. Um, yeah, but 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 see, understand um, Jorge Diaz. I hope I'm saying your name right. Those are all political problems, right? Th those those are systemic problems, systematic problems that were put together, right? So you need good government to solve that. The system is so chaotic, you're not going to be able to elect good government. It's too chaotic. The, the, the system, we need a reset, right? The question is, Who's going to bring apart, bring about this reset is the is the question that you have to start, you know, you know, asking yourself. But the system is problematic. Right. Right. These these are problems that were created by the system. So you need people that's willing to go into that system and fix those problems that that their their ethics and morals are properly aligned with the public, with the people. Right. But again, you have a lot of people who are easy. They easily you can corrupt them easily. Right. And they don't they don't have any real values or value systems. So. You're not going to change this problem by voting good government in because, again, like I said, the system. Even if you get one good senator, it's like, wh what good is it? Right? It's 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 so it's, so, it's the system is just again like I, there there's so many gatekeepers in the way and so many people who they're used to business as usual. You're just not going to be able to change that much. You're just not. This is why I said before. I'm not telling you not to vote. I'm not telling you not to be involved in politics. What I'm saying to you is to be realistic as to as to how effective that's going to be in, in getting change, right? Like, that's what I want you to think about. Don't put all of your energy and focus into elections and presidents. I think that you should be putting just as much, if not more, effort and energy into you building the proper things that you need for yourself. That's what I believe. I believe in doing both. And I think that that should make enough sense to you. Uh, 
Uh, Funny City says PayPal has made it Robinhood easy to buy crypto. Imagine if you had to store your shares of stock on a ledger. Stock market would not be ninety trillion. Now people can buy easier. Bull run coming. I agree one hundred percent. Um, Funny City. That's what I was talking about. Um, for the average person who's not that tech savvy, they don't want to play around with a ledger all day long. This requires, you know, it requires a little bit of technical know-how or running a full node. Most people don't even know what a full node is. So this is definitely going to make it easy for um, uh, crypto to pump. And that's what I said before, guys. We're, a lot of us, we're going to get filthy rich because we didn't sit around and listen to a person tell us that something was a Ponzi scheme. You know, like that, 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 that's just so stupid. When, when, when I hear people say that Bitcoin's a Ponzi scheme, like that's just ignorant. So, but with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up by saying this. I have been involved in crypto for, I got to check the exact time, probably eight years, close to eight years. I've witnessed bull markets. I've witnessed bear markets. Um, I've been scammed. I've been schemed in this market and I've made a lot of money in, th in these markets. Only two people get rich in crypto holders and founders. You hold your crypto, you maintain your private keys. You're going to make a lot of money. If every week you're chasing the latest and greatest DeFi project, if every week you're looking for the next bit connect, the next, I can just sit around and make money or I can just yield farm. You're looking for yam. And you're looking for sushi. You and your money will be removed. Your money will be removed from you. But if you focus on educating yourself about the technology, taking calculated risks, listening to people who they, they have a, a, a sound grasp on and you know what's going on, you'll be okay. You'll be fine. That's why I created my tech academy. I created the academy for basically to give you guys quality information for an affordable price so that you can have some understanding and guidance as to where you was going. And also to create a community, um, a community where you could feel safe, that no one's trying to, you know, dump on you. Uh, I'm not going to say any names, but a lot of these big YouTubers and influencers in crypto, um, they don't have your best interests. Uh, they will dump on you at, you know, dump some garbage coin on you that they're getting paid to promote. I don't do that. Uh, anything that I promote to you, I have my own money in. And um, I just I would I, would, I hope that at this point you see how serious this is. A wealth transfer is happening. This wealth transfer will happen with or without you. Um, I would encourage you to get on board in an under in a mature way. Don't be a pig. Don't don't just dump all your money in at thirteen thousand or twelve thousand dollar cost average. Ease your way in. Buy pullbacks. Understand that you will get another opportunity to buy, but be ready to buy when it's time to buy. And with that being said, guys, I am free for the rest of the week. Those of you seeking consultations, you're welcome to book a consultation on the website. Um, if you are a lifetime member, reach out to me. If you did not get your consultation yet, I want to speak with you. I want to help you become as successful as possible. Please email me. I'm begging you. Uh, with that being said, guys, please like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on Instagram. A link is in the description below. Shoot me a DM if you want to contact Make sure, contact me. Make sure that you're joining the mailing list so that you can be notified when I'm going live because videos like this, they're not going to promote these type of videos on YouTube. I really don't get any type of traffic from YouTube's front page, home page, because they don't like promoting crypto. So please do that. And if you're interested in learning about crypto, blockchain technology, or web development, we have a free seven-day trial going on at My Tech Academy. A link is in the description below. And for those of you who own some crypto, guys, <laughs> our bags are beginning to pump. Have a blessed and beautiful night.